Here's a very high level list that I came up with. First, we need to declare and initialize new variables, arrays, and matrices so that we can solve for and store the psi e and the psi h values in the PML. And second, we need to solve for and add the psi e and psi h terms in the updating loop. Um, and I'll say here the time, I'll say maybe this time stepping loop because every time step we're going to need to update the psi e and psi h values. And third, we need to add an observation point or some way of testing, observing and testing the code to see how well the PML works. To test the PML. Let's dive into each of these three areas in more detail. Here are the same equations as shown on slides two and three. They're just smaller here so I can fit them all onto one slide. First, we can see that all the values in the PML region depend on sigma and sigma, sigma e and sigma h. Fundamentally, the two-dimensional PML we're creating here in discrete space has many of the same requirements as the one-dimensional PML we created earlier, which was also in discrete space. As a result, we will be able to reuse here some of the details of the one-dimensional PML that we created earlier. For example, sigma e PML and the sigma h PML profiles are going to be similar to what we used before in the one-dimensional PML. We're going to use a polynomial grading that increases with depth into the PML. So before, if this was the left side of our grid, we had our PML, sigma increased using a polynomial grading to a sigma max value. One main difference is that our PML now needs to be on the right side of the grid. So we will need a polynomial grading to increase. If this was i equal one, now we need it to increase towards i equal i max. So sigmas will increase to some sigma max value on this side. Then looking at these equations, it looks like we need to declare and initialize the sigma so I will call that sigma e PML and sigma h PML. And we need to also define BE, CE, and BH and CH arrays only in the PML region. And we need to define the psi E, Z, well, this here, it would be H, Y, X uh, matrix and the psi E, Z, X matrix. The first lowercase letter, remem remember here, def defines the orientation of the field component. And the second lowercase letter here, X, denotes the absorbing direction of the PML. Including Z and X isn't critical in our two-dimensional code here because we're only implementing a PML on one side of the grid. But those subscripts would be more important if we were implementing PML on the other sides of the grid as well. Since we've already implemented a PML in one dimension, let's make things easier for ourselves and define the PML to have the same thickness as before and to be on the same number of field components from the edge of the grid. For example, you can see in this diagram, which is for the one-dimensional PML that we used earlier, the first EZ component was the perfect electric conductor. That was just equal to zero at all time. And then the PML extended out to the EZ component right here at I equal PML plus one. And also it extended out to the HY component that was at I PML. In this diagram, PML is equal to 10. Also to make things easier, go ahead and define the sigmas, BE and CE and BH and CH 
and the psi values to have the same indices as we used earlier on the left side of the grid. The reason is we can then reuse more of the coding that we implemented earlier in the one-dimensional co code. Ultimately, since we will be implementing the PML on the right side of the two-dimensional grid, we will call on the PML values in reverse order when we need them on the right side of the grid. This is because the PML on the right side is just a mirror image of the PML on the left side. So we'll see that soon. For now, let's initialize the arrays and the matrices we need for the PML region. So this sigma is going to be zeros, and it'll be, since we're using it on an electric field component, the size will be PML. It goes out to PML plus one, but since the first one is a PEC, it's just PML, so it'll just have PML size. And the same thing here. So these are gonna be the same size going across the grid. And for sigma H, is going to be one less. So we'll have zeros, PML, minus one, and the same thing for here for CH. Now since we have to store the psi, at psi, psi values at all of the EZ and HY field locations within the PML, the psi's need to be matrices that extend over all the K indices in the PML as well as the I indices. So we can write this as zeros, PML, I'm gonna write PML plus one so that we can call on the same indices as uh, the EZ component. So they're gonna be co-located. So it's gonna start at I equal one just like EZ starts at I equal one. PML plus one, K max minus one because there's only K max minus one EZ components. And this will be zeros and it'll extend out to PML in the i direction, and then we'll have k max minus one in the k direction as well. Next, since we will be using these values on the right side of the two-dimensional grid, make a sketch of what this PML diagram shown on the top part here, what it would look like if it were implemented on the right side of the grid. Make sure to label the indices of the field components so that we can make sure to put the PML on the correct field components on the right side of the grid.